Have you ever wondered what that option is during the install process that says manual partitioning? And sometimes you just want to modify what uses what on your actual disk. Well, in this video, we're going over all of manual partitioning, whether or not you're using GPT, MBR, UEFI, or legacy. All these things I'm going to kind of try and explain and go through a lot of samples so you can see real time uh, what I'm doing so you can emulate this exact same thing. So next time you do an install, you can do manual partitioning and set these up. So first off, we have the boot process. So when you go to install, you will typically be either uh, UEFI or Legacy. These are the two options you have to boot from on a drive. Uh, now, I've done an extended video series over UEFI and Legacy. If you want to check that out, you can. The link will be in the description. But uh, for this video, I want to just go ahead and say, hey, uh, depending on what you're using, and if you're dual booting, you definitely need to stick to the same type of install. Meaning when you go to install your operating system, you need to do UEFI for Windows. And if you have Linux on there, it also needs to be UEFI. You can't have differing versions, otherwise your dual boot process is just kind of a nightmare because you have to select each disk and it just gets really complex and there's no need for that. So if you're doing UEFI, do it across the board for all the operating systems installed on that system. Or if you're doing legacy, make sure everything's installed doing legacy. So let's go over to the desktop. I'm going to show you the differences on the BIOS select screen between installing legacy and installing UEFI because this computer installs both as most computers these days operate and actually can install both UEFI and legacy. Uh, so let's go ahead and give you an example of both. Okay, so let's determine, we'll go to a boot menu from our BIOS here. So we'll pull this up. And here is where you really select. When you go to install your operating system, here is really what determines if it's legacy install or if it's UEFI. If you boot just USB flash drive, this is, let's say, a, a Windows install or if it's a Linux install, and you select just USB without any UEFI in front of it, that's going to be a legacy install. By default, the installer is driven by your selection here. Now, if I come down here and say UEFI and I go and install uh, the operating system that's on this flash drive, well, that operating system will be UEFI based. So that's the differences. So some people get confused because sometimes they only have one option. Let's say you disabled UEFI in your BIOS or it just isn't showing. That actual installation media means we'll always install legacy. Uh, most option, most times you get the option, but some other times you have legacy disabled and it only boots to UEFI installs. This means you'd only have the option for UEFI. So good to know uh, most instances where you don't get the option between legacy and UEFI, it's a BIOS setting you need to change and everybody BIOS is different. So with this, let's go ahead and boot using UEFI. So if we actually installed through this, again, this would be a UEFI installation. So next up, on this screen, we're gonna go ahead and go over GPT and MBR. Now, MBR is sometimes referred to DOS, and this is the partition scheme. Think of it as like a master record of uh, all of the actual partitions on that drive. So when you carve up your drive, this is like the index. So uh, sometimes the, the newer version is called GPT, and this partition table puts a record at the beginning and also at the end. Now, when you create a partition, you have to create a very specialized partition to utilize this. So it works differently than MBR. Now, on MBR, you don't need that special partition, and it only has one at the very beginning of the drive. So what this means for you is um, you don't need that special boot partition on an MBR partition scheme. Now, you're still kind of following me here. Well, let's go ahead and show you the differences in the actual disk. So if you're unsure what you have, you can do F disk from your command line, or you could also just go into G parted like I'm showing in this example, and you can see what type of disk this is. Now, when it's GPT, it's really important to note that 
these are controlled like kind of like the partitions where when it comes to the bootable drive. So this is kind of confusing, but when it comes to MBR, there's actual flags on partitions. GPD doesn't have flags. MBR and DOS-based partition schemes do have flags. So what you do, you can make one partition on a legacy MBR type system and then just mark it bootable and it'll always just boot to that. So that's pretty slick. And that's how some Linux installs, you'll see, you know, a lot of stuff online where they only create one partition. Well, they're, they're just booting in using an MBR based partition system and then marking that one partition bootable and putting everything into it. So that's pretty awesome. However, when you got GPT, you need to do like a boot partition and it's a little more complex because you don't have that flagging system. However, GPT is a lot better because it supports higher end drives. So if you have bigger than two terabytes, you need to have a GPT drive. And uh, this is where people kind of get lost. So let's go ahead and jump over to the desktop, show you Gpart it, and I'm gonna show you uh, the actual partition scheme on this one and kind of overload those differences and show you examples. So we're presented with this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, Gpart it live. All right, we're not gonna touch the key map. And we're just gonna hit enter because it defaults to 33 US English. And we're gonna continue to start X and G part it automatically. Uh, you wouldn't need any of these other options unless it didn't show on your screen or it gave you a black screen. Okay, so this starts up our G parted automatically. So the first thing I like to do is just look at what our partitions are. I can tell already we have a boot partition right here. This says FAT32, but this is probably flagged as EFI uh, if we actually looked at its description. So let's see what this is. I'm going to say this is a GPT disk, but I always like to make sure by going device information. Sure enough, partition table on this one is GPT. As you see, we have our boot partition, we have our swap, and we have our main partition, which has both root and home. Some Linux installs break out root and home, um, but this is the basic structure. So Boot partition for GPT is absolutely needed. We have our swap because I think this one only has like eight megs of memory or eight gigs of memory, I should say. And then we also have all the rest of the drives allocated for root and home in this one. And this is actually using uh, BetterFS where some other people usually do EXT4 is typically uh, what most people select. I wanted to go a little differently on this one. That's why I selected it. So this is the basic partition scheme of a GPT disk. Now, if this was MBR and this said MBR or DOS over here, that is uh, both MBR and DOS, again, is about the same partition table structure. It's just some programs call it one and others call it another. So let's say it's not GPT. You could have literally just one partition. Let's say it's EXT4, and then you could literally have the flags boot, and that's it and you could put everything in there. Your dash boot directory would be in there. Everything could be in there. And then if you wanted, probably a swap file would be good for something with low memory like this one with only eight gigs. So that is the basis of this. And uh, you know that's the differences between the structure in GPT and the structure here. So with that, let's go ahead and boot into our Linux install. And I'm gonna show you how all three of these are mounted in what's called FSTAB in Linux. Uh, this actually kind of shows you how the directory structure is laid out. So you can actually look at what happens with my, my boot partition, how that is actually labeled and mounted. And then you can see the swap partition and then see finally where our root and home kind of reside. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and launch into terminal. And we're going to just look at our fstab. fstab is always in the etc directory and just simply fstab. So uh, we're going to just do a cat, which just goes ahead and prints out all of fstab right here in the terminal. So go full screen with it and then just do etc fstab. So from here, let's go ahead and look at what each one of these is. Instead of using the dev, it actually uses UUID. This is the actual identifier of that partition. Um, so I always recommend whenever doing manual edits in FSTAB using the UEFI or UUID. Now this is the, the root directory. It's using the better FS and then you have all the options on this. So these options are a little excessive. If you're not sure what to put here, I always recommend just doing defaults 
and then space zero zero. Uh, usually this is good. The only time you would change this is usually for uh, a root partition and other things, but I think this gives it like extra priority. I usually, like I said, if you're you're curious and you're adding partitions in FSTAB, usually zero zero has never steered me wrong. But uh, with that, this is how the identifier of the drive in FSTAB, this is where it's mounted at. This is the file system it's going to. These are the options. And then we have zero zero here at the end. Uh, and I don't want to confuse you by explaining that. So with this portion, we're done. And then we have the FAT32 portion, which uh, was in the other one. Uh, if you looked on the other screen, this was the FAT32 boot partition, which is e e EFI. So this one, we have the UUID to identify it, but this is SDA1, which we saw in Gparted. It's to forward slash boot. So it's mounting this to forward slash boot in our file system. It's a, a FAT32 or VFAT directory style, and then it has all these options. Now, most times I don't have any of these options for an EFI partition. This seems a bit excessive. Uh, I guess whenever I installed this, it just kind of defaulted to all this, which is fine, I guess, but uh, you probably don't need much of this uh, as far as the options. And then finally, we have our swap partition. This isn't actually mounted anywhere on the drive. A swap partition is exactly that, a swap partition. So you'd put the UUID, none, and then swap. So this isn't mounted, but you use it as swap space, defaults, zero, zero. So if you're unsure of the UUID, you can do BLK ID or pseudo BLK ID, and then it'll show you uh, what you have. So it'll say, hey, this is your boot partition, which is fat. You have your swap partition, which is right here. And then you have your actual better FS system, which is right here. And these all match up. So if you look here to this UUID, it'll go ahead and match right here. The VFAT will match right here to this UUID. And that's how you'd, you'd find your UUID to put in your FSTAB. And then finally, uh, one other thing I'd show, if you're still kind of getting a little lost, you're unsure what partitions what in Linux, I like to do DF disk free dash H for human readable. This kind of breaks down where your stuff is. So you can see the device identifier SDA4, which we can match that to right here, is our root partition. It's currently used 47 gigs out of 220 or 218 gigs. And then if we go to boot, you can see this right here is SDA1 right here, and that's mounted to boot. And then swap isn't listed in disk free because it's a swap partition. Everything's always used all the time. If it needs swap, it just goes ahead and use whatever swap is there. Uh, but it's not actually mounted, so it wouldn't show on this screen. These are the basis screens for actually maintaining your partitions in Linux and then just kind of manually partitioning and just so you have a better understanding of a lot of the options because it's so easy to get lost in just technical explanations. That's why I wanted to show real world examples. So with that, you have these bases. Now, if you look at the examples, you can kind of see it on Linux based systems. If it's a legacy or a MBR based drive, you can have one partition, you can flag it as bootable, and then you can put everything in the root. So you can have your home, you can have your dash boot, you can have the root all within the same partition. And then on top of that, you might create like a swap partition uh, just so you can have uh, some swap going on in that drive for performance reasons on uh, systems with not very much memory. Like eight gigs and less, you probably should have a swap uh, partition just as an example. So with this, a, a regular boot partition on MBR, you don't really need the boot partition. Usually if it's an MBR DOS based partition scheme, you just have that one partition if you really want to be simplistic about it and mark that partition bootable. So with that, you also have GPT setups. Now, GPT setups require the very first partition to be a, a GPT, basically a boot partition. And it'll say EFI boot partition. So it's actual type of partition that has to be EFI. And, and this will basically allow it to boot. Now, 
I've kind of mixed up some of the terminology when I say UEFI and I say GPT, a lot of times those are together. Almost every single time you do this, there is some mix and match you can do, but it gets really complex. And for this video, if you're watching it as a beginner, I would just say, hey, if you're using UEFI, you probably should be using GPT or you can do legacy. But if you're doing a legacy boot, just know that you should probably use the, the MBR based structure because GPT gets really confusing really quick uh, when you get the legacy and it doesn't work all that well a lot of times. So uh, when you're doing a legacy boot, I like to stick to just MBR DOS based schemes. You can do GPT, but it gets a little dicey. So just as a general rule of thumb, I like to just say, hey, if I boot UEFI, I typically go GPT partition scheme. And if I boot legacy, typically I go MBR DOS based partition scheme. This makes things kind of easy for me. And, uh, you know, if you're going to go out there and do UEFI boots, uh, I would recommend GPT just because they synergize so well with each other. You can mix and match and kind of break this rule for sure. It just isn't advised and you can have some, uh, let's just say quirky things happen that uh, I can't really go into in this video because everybody's system's a little differently. Uh, but for this example, let's just go ahead and say that. So when it comes to the GPT, you have all of those partitions I gone over. And when it comes to MBR, you just have a lot of times one partition and that partition is marked or flagged bootable. Remember the flags are only for MBR and legacy partitions where GPT does not work on flags, uh, a lot of times the actual partition uh, determines where that actual bootable is. And when you have that bootable partition, you gotta make sure in Linux that you're mounting it to basically forward slash boot. Uh, that way that partition basically uh, knows that, hey, this is where it'll boot from. Super important, um, but I wanted to just go ahead and lay out these examples so you'd know how to manually partition drives. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.